Welcome to Reform Perspective. I'm Alexandra Ellison. Since the Morgan Teller decision in 1988, there has been no abortion law in Canada. The Supreme Court struck down the existing law, stating that it hindered equal access to abortion. However, it's essential to note that the court's decision did not endorse the absence of federal legislation on abortion or protections for preborn children. In fact, it affirmed Parliament's right to create new legislation. In response to the Morgan Teller decision, Brian Mulroney's conservative government attempted to draft a compromise abortion law in 1990. Despite efforts to balance pro-life and abortion advocate perspectives, Bill C-43, which permitted abortion only if a physician deemed it necessary for a woman's health, passed in the House of Commons, but was later defeated in the Senate. Since then, Member of Parliament Kathy Wagenthal has championed change by introducing three private members' bills, each aimed at recognizing and upholding the inherent value of human life. So I'm Kathy Wagenthal, I'm the Member of Parliament for Yorkton Malville, which is a riding uh, along the Manitoba border, a couple hours north of Regina, our capital, and it's 42,000 square kilometers and it's rural and I've been a member of parliament for eight years now. The first one was, uh, we called it Cassie and Molly's Law, protecting pregnant women and their preborn children. Um, an individual named Jeff from uh, Windsor had reached uh, out, I think at one point in time, had become uh, friends with folks at ARPA. And it was actually um, Mike Shooten who introduced me to the possibility of doing a bill in relation to what happened uh, to Jeff when he lost uh, his partner, Mal, uh, Cassie, uh, who was seven months pregnant at the time. And they weren't together anymore, but they were still in a very good relationship and had named Molly Molly and were ready to, to raise her together uh, in their homes about a block apart. And, and she was attacked in her home uh, by someone uh, uh, who knew both of them and uh, it was horrific, and uh, of course, what Jeff didn't expect and was thoroughly uh, blown away was that there was no recognition of Molly. So Cassie and Molly's law uh, was to protect preborn children um, by basically bringing in a law that that uh, gave serious uh, um, criminal charges for also um, either injuring or taking the life of a preborn child. So that bill used words like preborn child, which um, is in the criminal code, but not in this context. And so uh, it, of course, raised the angst of the House pretty well, well every other party, who uh, are very, very anti-pro-life legislation and are very pro-abortion and so that's the direction that they wanted to take this bill which they did but I was very fortunate that my uh, colleagues uh, all supported it except for two and one abstained and um, for various reasons but that being said it, it did wake the house up to the fact that there was someone there who was willing to bring those issues to the floor when I do trade shows or anything like that, I always have petitions. So I would have one on firearms. I live in rural Saskatchewan. Uh, one on palliative care and one on life issues. And um, I realized that although people want abortion to be available, um, they have this idea that it's already a law in Canada and it's minimal. So when I brought forward the next one, it was a sex selection abortion bill and um, that basically should be illegal and God is really good he times things often to assist with what he's put you there to do and at the same time a uh, dark maru blue poll came out that made it clear that in Canada Canadians are not as divided on this issue is what it said as honestly the media and politicians want you to think they are and what it did is it showed that uh, the majority of Canadians want access to abortion, but as you, they dug deeper with their questions, they are totally want a law against sex selective abortion, late term abortion. They want more pregnancy counseling centers, not less, and they want doctors to have to share with their patient exactly what the dangers and uh, potential uh, complications are of this type of surgery, which is not required uh, in Canada. I mean, I've had 
my gallbladder out. I spent half a day at the hospital being told a number of things, and that does not happen in this case. So I brought it forward, and um, you know, people would come to sign my petitions, and they'd go, I, I, I believe in access to abortion. I'm a nurse or whatever. And I'd say, oh, so you're okay with sex collective abortion? And they, no. And then I would explain the dynamics that are in Canada right now, where besides North Korea, we're the only country without any laws. And they would sign my petition. So I realized that um, although it was not going to pass in the House, and this is um, one of the challenges of this area, is that um, you have to win in different ways until it becomes something that can happen within our government. And because of the way the House is set up right now, the only political party that you can be a part of uh, that, that uh, does not insist that you have to be pro-abortion is the Conservative Party. So you know you're not going to win a vote in the House. But it's important that we always keep these things in front of Canadians. I believe that as legislators, we, we have a responsibility to respond to culture, but we are also responsible for shaping what our values are in Canada, and this is part of that. So again, of course, the pill, bill didn't pass, and it was very vitriol. If you ever want to go and listen to some of the speeches, um, it's very clear that there's a lot of anger and, and an attempt to make um, those of us that are uh, pro-life look like terrible people, which, oh, yeah, it's the House of Commons. So, um, but we made headway because across the country people woke up to realize that in Canada we, we don't have these laws. As Wagenthal mentions, with the current political climate, it's challenging to get parties with hard stances on abortion to side with pro-life bills. A policy analyst with ARPA who has worked on these pro-life bills explains why she says they take the incremental approach. Yeah, so we take an incremental approach just because of the legal reality in Canada right now, that there is no abortion law, so there is no legal protection for any preborn children. And there's this polarized debate that kind of pits the pro-choice and pro-life side against each other. So we work to find common ground where Canadians can agree so that we can protect some preborn children while we work for that cultural shift to be able to protect them all. This past spring, Wagon Hall had the opportunity to introduce another private member's bill. I have to admit that after the third election, I said, okay, Lord, I'd be okay if I didn't have a, another private member's bill. And he said, nope, that's not how it's going to be. So I did get an opportunity again this last time around, uh, number 62 or 63. And I brought forward uh, uh, the Violence Against Pregnant Women Act, which is similar to Cassie and Molly's law, but uh, far more targeted. Um, it didn't bring in any sentencing or anything like that. But what it did is said that uh, if an individual has committed this crime, and that crime has been recognized by the courts, and this person has been found guilty, then the judge must consider that a child was also physically harmed or murdered as an aggravating factor. And what that means is they absolutely must take that into account when they're sentencing. And there's only about a handful, 10 circumstances where aggravating factors are required. But this is about uh, violence against pregnant women. And violence against women is a priority of this government, and something that they want to champion that they're about. And of course, I was able to indicate that, well, if that's the case, then they definitely should be supporting this bill. And again, um, they took the same approach they always do, which is um, attack in the House of Commons. And then the Prime Minister and a number of um, women liberal uh, members of Parliament did a, a Twitter attack on me. And of course, they tried to make it sound like this is all about abortion again. It's a hidden attempt, all that kind of thing. And um, it was amazing because um, right across the country, people responded to that with their comments, um, with um, um, saying, here's the actual feedback on this bill. It's two sentences long. And it's about women who want to have a child. And they, uh, they really lit into them 
for taking advantage of this in the way that they did. Now again, of course, it didn't change um, the vote in the House, unfortunately. Um, they're representing, everyone else in the House of Commons is representing about 16% of Canadians who are on the extreme perspective of abortion at any time for any reason. So um, it was exciting. It was exciting. And, and uh, fortunately, my leader was very supportive, as was our whole caucus. And so we feel like a number of other issues around MAID and, um, you know, circumstances where this government is offside with Canadians because they're not out there representing the true perspectives. They have their own ideology and their own purposes and their own attempts to use an issue as a wedge issue that they're losing the ground to do that. Having a child is the most impressive thing that a human woman can do is have those children and there are many who would love to have children that can't and we need to at, at the very least continue to push for the fact that this is something that women are being misled. They're being misled to think that they can't afford or they can't handle. We're women. We can handle anything. And sometimes a bad choice is made, but that doesn't mean that you, you have a bad choice and you follow it up with another bad choice. So it's important to me that we, we celebrate life and, uh, you know, the beginning of that is we're knit together in our mother's wombs and, and uh, it's a spiritual experience and a privilege to be a mom and to have a child. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Please feel free to like this video and share it with family and friends. For Reform Perspective, I'm Alexandra Ellison in Ottawa.